Al fans, and welcome to another edition of Al Sports Update. Alongside Josh Rotenberg, I'm Joe Polinski. Coming up, a true Philadelphia basketball icon is given another honor, and we'll have all the details about the football team's national signing day. Plus, another Temple coach reaches a career milestone, and we'll tell you everything you need to know about this year's baseball team. But first things first. The men's basketball team was 18-4 heading into its matchup with conference rival Duquesne on Wednesday night. This was a rematch of last year's A-10 championship game between the Owls and the Dukes. Of course, the Owls won that game, grabbing their second straight conference title. We go to the action. Early first half, Relier Jefferson misses, but Lavoie Allen's there with the putback. Allen had 14 boards on the night. Then it's Guzman to Jefferson. Back to Allen. Tic-tac-toe with the finish. Later in the half, Duquesne catches Temple in their full court press as Eric Evans gets the layup and the foul. But the Owls would strike back right here as TJ DeLeo gets the steal and goes the length of the court for the two-handed jam. The Cherian weight went into the half up by eight. Second half now, Damian Saunders trying to get the Dukes back in it. He gets the ball down low with the and one. He would complete it, but Temple would prove to be too much here as Ramon Moore seals the deal with this off-balance shot to go along with his game-high 15 points. Temple takes this one, 76 to 60. And that winning streak started against city rival LaSalle. We picked this one up early with Luis Guzman with a nice feed to Juan Fernandez, who makes a beautiful backhand pass to Ryan Brooks, who scores two of his 10 points. Next, Michael Eric gets in on the action with a nice little jumper here, pulling the Owls within two. Fellow big man, Lavoy Allen gets in on the highlight reel, recording one of his game high two blocks as he rejects Jarrell Williams' offer to the basket, setting up a nice Fernandez layup to help keep the Cherry and White in front. Lazelle did, however, add two baskets of his own from Rodney, Murray, from Rodney Green and Eric Murray. The two combined for 24 of the Explorer 52 points, but it was all tempo in this one as the Cherry and White would add another basket by Lavoy Allen here, taking the contest, your final 64 to 52. As for the duo of Green and Murray, the team relied heavily on blocking and steals to contain them. I got the chance to explore how exactly the Owls were able to accomplish the feat. Confidence, determination, and trust. Those are the three words that describe the men's basketball team who is making great strides this athletic season. Under fourth year coach Fran Dunphy, the team has had several accomplishments. From defeating Villanova on December 13th to earning their first national ranking in eight years on December 21st. In the 64-52 win over LaSalle, the Cherry and White once again lived up to the hype, as the big story coming in was the duo of center Eric Murray and guard Rodney Green. The Owls held both explorers to a combined 24 points while forcing 11 turnovers. Senior guard Ryan Brooks knew they had to be stopped. We uh, you know, made it a priority just to make sure we were focused at all times of where they were on the court. You know, Rodney's a great playmaker. He definitely looks for a you know, big fellow inside Eric Murray uh, to make plays. And, and they're both very aggressive. And we just wanted to make sure we were aware of where they were on the court at all times and just communicate, communicate out there as a, as a team and, and, and you know, just have fun. Uh, I thought we did you know, a great job matching up with those two players. Blocking was another big part of the game as the Owls received key contributions from Lavoy Allen and Michael Eric. The two combined to block three LaSalle shots to help give the Owls a 45-35 second half lead. Ronnie Green was in the post, you know, he liked to uh, you know, help off certain guys. So, you know, if I had Jarrell Williams, you know, I'd help off my man to make Ronnie pick up the ball. And um, on the perimeter, and I think Brooks did a good job of keeping him in front of him. And make Coach Dunphy's decision a valuable one. We're always trying to get the ball inside. I know it doesn't look like it sometimes, but that's always our, our key is to try to get it down inside, let the defense collapse and kick back outside, and hopefully we get some threes made. In other basketball news, during halftime of the 8-10 contest against LaSalle, the Owls brought back and recognized head coach, former men's coach John Cheney and his induction into the Philadelphia Big Five Hall of Fame. Cheney guided the Cherry and White to five Elite Eights upon his retirement in 2006. Cheney was one of three coaches getting the hall pass, the others being Rolly Massimino of Villanova and Bill Speedy Morris of LaSalle. The coaches were honored with a luncheon at the Palestra on January 29th. Current men's coach Fran Dunphy was in attendance at the event. After a somewhat shaky winter break for the women's basketball team, the Owls returned to their winning ways as classes resumed. The Cherry and White were riding a five-game winning streak coming into their matchup against A-10 rival St. Bonaventure. 
Over that span, sophomore forward Kristen McCarthy led the team with just over 14 points per game. Lots of great stats here, but the Bonnies didn't seem to care one bit. Although McCarthy led Temple with 16 points, the Owls couldn't keep pace in the second half. The Bonnies actually shot 62% from the field over the final 20 minutes. One bright spot, Lakeisha Edie scored five, giving her 1,000 career total points at Temple. Edie's jumper with just under four seconds left lifted Temple to a 58-56 win over a city and Atlantic 10 rival St. Joe's. That was the Owls' second close win over the Hawks in the past month. Temple is 15-6 on the year. Nikki Frank, head coach of the women's fencing team, can now add another accomplishment to her list. Frank earned career win number 600 at the Northwestern Multi-Meet this past weekend. She became one of the few coaches in Temple Athletics history to accomplish the feat. The Cherry and White return to the mats at the Duke Invitational on February 7th. The Temple's men's gymnastic team recently posted a win over conference opponent Illinois Chicago. Co-captain Patrick McLaughlin led the Owls to the victory. The senior finished first in the floor exercise, pommel horse, and the high bar events. Temple's next home meet will take place February 13th against Springfield. On the women's side, the Owls traveled to New Brunswick to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Sophomore Katie Watson led the Cherry and White in the vault and all-around competitions, while junior captain Catherine Ho posted a meet best 9.7 on the beam. Next up for the team, the annual Liberty Classic at McGonagall Hall on February 6th. On February 19th, Temple's baseball team will head to Fort Myers, Florida for their opening day. It will be the first time that this year's squad will be able to play actually on a baseball field outdoors. Al Sports' Tom Monfaletto shows us how the Owls have been preparing this upcoming season. College baseball in the Northeast can cause some significant road bumps. Since frigid weather conditions rule out practicing outside, the Temple baseball team is forced to practice indoors for the majority of their preseason. And we've got the combination of three gyms with, with one behind me that you'll see mm -hmm. um, where we can spread out and warm up and, and do some defensive stuff, pickoffs, rundowns, uh, bunt defense, that type of thing, and then go into our two auxiliary gyms and, and hit the cages. Sometimes we'll have uh, outfielders in one gym, pitchers in one gym, and an infielders in another gym. And our assistant coach, Coach Agnella, works with us individually uh, on fielding drills, whether it's... I mean, it's difficult to have an indoor practice, but uh, McGonagall is big enough to where we can get uh, a lot of situational defenses. I mean, it's hard to hit or anything, but we have smaller gyms for that. To start the season, Temple will travel to Florida, Las Vegas, and North Carolina to play Florida Gulf Coast, UNLV, and Duke, respectively. While those programs have the luxury of practicing outside in beautiful climates, Temple has the luxury of practicing in sunny McGonagall Hall. But if you think Temple's baseball program uses that as an excuse, think again. As, as coaches and educators, we need to do the best job possible to, to make them understand that we can outwork our, our deficiencies or, or maybe it's a motivator to help us work harder. But that's not something we try and do in our program. It sets you up for the real world, really, because everything's not going to be perfect. But I think it makes us stronger as a team. We come together. By the time March gets here, we're playing up at Ambler. It's going to be cold anyway. I mean, it could be anywhere from 50 degrees to snow. We feel like we can, we can outwork our obstacles and we can do the things that we need to do to be prepared for opening day. Two weeks stand between the Owls and their first game. Rain or shine, they'll be as prepared as humanly possible. For Owl Sports, I'm Tom Monfaletto.